ladies and gentlemen, you know my first guest tonight from Freaks and Geeks, Forgetting Sarah Marshall and the Muppets movie. He is the creator and star of a new series, Dispatches from Elsewhere. I don't know if this sounds stupid. Actually, I do know it sounds stupid. I don't care. I felt like there was magic. I felt like there was real magic. Maybe I could be a part of that. Because suddenly, all the signs around me that I had allowed to dictate my life, they lost their power. And what happened? It lasted a few days or so, and then much more easily than I would have hoped it just drifted away. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Jason Siegel. Nice to see you too. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thanks. I'm glad to hear it. I understand yes. you celebrated a big birthday recently. Yeah, I'm 40 years old now. 40? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's nothing. Is that true? That's I hope nothing. so. I it hope is totally nothing. You've just begun. I hadn't even started the Colbert Report when I was 40. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah. yeah. No, it feels, uh, it feels exciting. Like, um, I don't know, this show in a lot of ways is like the Dracula musical from Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Dispatches from Elsewhere. Dispatches from Elsewhere, but if a 40-year-old made it. It's just a little bit more grown up, yeah. Okay, well, here we are. Can you explain what Dispatches from Elsewhere is? Yeah, sure. Or what it's about. Yeah, yeah. It's the exact opposite of Fight Club. It's, um... (laughs) You can talk about it all you want? (laughs) Yes, exactly. Well, no, it's it's a real thing that happened in San Francisco in, like, the early 2000s, where I think we all have this feeling, especially right now, that there should be uh, more or that we're deserving of, like, a happier feeling. And so this group of adults got together, and instead of beating each other up over it, they decided to make magic in the secrecy of night. So you would wake up and there would be a statue planted or a mural on a wall that wasn't there before. So it's so about... the next day, other people would experience yeah. this thing that they had done in the middle of the night. Yeah, like that's right. Anonymous gifts to San Francisco. You know what it is? It's like magic as an act of defiance. Oh. An act of beauty in the world. Yeah. To push back the darkness. Yeah. That's interesting. It's, it's a show about saying, like, I refuse to accept this thing that's coming at me. I'm going to make the world beautiful. This is yeah. a good time to do this show. Yeah, yeah, I thought so, too. It really too. is. I thought so, too. Resistance through beauty is very interesting. Yeah. And, and I assume it's about love. Yeah, it's about love. It's about community. We're being told so much that we're separate from each other. And mm-hmm. this show uh, forces you to imagine what if we're all the same. Um, do you, what made you want to tell the story? Like, what was, what was the thing that triggered it for you? I hadn't made something from scratch for a really long time. Um, I did Forgetting Sarah Marshall when I was like 25, and I made The Muppets. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time ago now. <laughs> They're yeah. applauding the age 25. Yes, well, everyone, it's the I best love age. Being 25. You have no idea how hard it's going to be. <laughs> um, and then I made The Muppets, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, and so I really wanted to make something from scratch again. And I found, like, I didn't know what to write about. I don't know if you've ever had that issue but at this yeah it's it's a scary feeling and so I was I was searching for what to write about and I saw this documentary about this thing Mm -hmm. and uh, I was like oh my god this is it this is what I'm gonna write about so I I called this secret Willy Wonka figure who put this whole thing on the person who originally created this sort of anonymous art yes it was very hard to track him down and I was told like you know good luck good luck getting getting him to agree to this so I gave him the pitch of what I wanted to do and he said, uh, not yet, and hung up on me. Meaning not yet, I don't want to tell I you I had about no it. idea. I had no idea what not yet meant. But then I found out. Like a month later, I got an email <laughs> with a location and a time in San Francisco. That's all it said? All it said. Location, time. And had you so- given this guy your email? No. No. <laughs> I'm not sure if I would have gone. Yeah. I had nothing uh-huh. to lose. Wow. So I drove up the coast of California, and I showed up at this location, and it was a hotel. And I walked in, and they said, we've been expecting you, Mr. Siegel. 
<laughs> Super creepy. And I, <laughs> yeah, it really was. And I got up to the room, and there was a note on the bed with another time and location for the next day, and a note that said, no one is going to make you feel stupid. And at that Wait, so you get to the room, there's no one from this group to meet you. Just no. the hotel says we've been expecting you, Mr. Yes. Siegel. Yes. And you go to the room that they've got for you, there's a note there, and the note says go someplace else tomorrow. Yes. Series of get notes. the hell out of there. Yeah, yeah. Nope. <laughs> I refused. I refused no, this... to get the hell out of there. Okay, yeah. And so I showed up the next day. You weren't nervous at all? Yeah, you know what? I was nervous, but that uh, that little note, no one is going to make you feel stupid, made me feel really safe. Like, oh, the, this is good. This is good, what's happening. Mm -hmm. And Because uh, that's everyone's big fear, right? That's why we don't try things, because we're afraid we're going to look stupid. I show up feeling pre-stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, tell me about it. So, uh, so then I showed up the next day, and I was put through this crazy Carmen Sandiego-style induction, which I profile in the show. That's what I ended up writing about. And I felt like a kid again. I felt like um, I was on this crazy adventure. I lost my sense of self-consciousness and identity until at one point I, I had to walk into this bar, working bar, and go up and say like a password, the, the crow flies at midnight. And then they were gonna give me my next clue. So I went in, I was so nervous. I said, the crow flies at midnight? And, uh, and they said, yes, it does. And they <laughs> handed me a thing. And then I'm walking out feeling like so cool. And then I hear, wait a minute. I've seen you naked in the movies. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I was back to reality. But that, that little moment of feeling like a kid again reminded me of this thing that's like available to all of us that, I don't know, there's a lot blocking that feeling. And so the show maybe attempts for an hour a week to, to unblock that. Wow. No, you... In the clip that we saw... In the clip we saw, you're talking about you, you felt that there was real magic. Yeah. There was real magic. Has magic been something that <laughs> you've always been... Do you, like, actual, like... I did sort of slide of kid. hand. You did that. Yeah, well, I really liked feeling like I had a secret that nobody knew about. I was obsessed with magic when I was young. I loved, my favorite place on Earth was the magic store at Disneyland, but it got ruined for me at one point. Um, I was a very obedient child. I like, I like to do what my parents told me. Really? Yes. Yeah, so we were, at, we were at Disneyland, and I said I'd like to go to the magic store. I was 10 years old. And I said, sure, you can go to the magic shop, but we're going to get sweatshirts next door. Do not leave the magic shop. So I said, okay, no problem. So I went in there, and uh, I really, really had to, had to urinate. And uh, my parents weren't coming back. <laughs> so I was waiting and starting to shake and sweat. And, uh, and I couldn't help it. <laughs> and then I just wet my pants in the middle of the <laughs> Disneyland magic shop. And I'm standing there just humiliated, waiting for my parents to come. And then uh, this old lady came in. <laughs> and she was, she was walking over the, um, my puddle. And, and then my parents came. And, um, and I heard the lady behind the counter call the like, cleanup. And she said, we need you in the magic shop, some old lady wet her pants. <laughs> and, and I never told anybody that it was, it was me. So sorry now to the old lady. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You did the right thing. Thank you. You did the right thing. No, I, I, that was when I ran. You, you did the right thing. Yeah, you I got the right out thing. of there. What well, did you tell your parents? Yeah, well, it was hard to hide. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's, yeah. Uh, but I'm a better man now. Yes. I like to think... Now you would just go use the bathroom. You've learned from yes. experience. No, that's right. There yeah. was a much simpler solution. Uh, we have to take a break. Oh, uh, man. Stick... I know. <laughs> stick around. We'll be right back with more Jason Siegel. I'm so sorry.